All right, here we go, lesson 2.5. Now you're gonna notice, I got the lesson number up there, 2.5, reasoning using algebraic properties, but it says part one. That means make sure you watch both videos. First one, I'm just gonna define a bunch of properties for you. And then the second video, I'm gonna show you how to use them. So that way it splits it up a little bit. It won't be you know 35 or 40 minutes long. So we'll try to do maybe 15 minutes on one, 20 minutes on the other. And uh, make sure though you take notes on both because when you take that video quiz, if you only do one of the videos, you're probably gonna miss easily half the questions. All right, so here we go. First thing we're gonna do is talk about what's called the addition property of equality. Okay, the addition property of equality. Now, I'm not gonna write all this down, but you do need to get it in your notes, so pause when necessary, rewind, whatever. But the addition property of equality says, you can add the same thing to both sides of an equal sign. You can add the same thing to both sides of an equal sign. And you've been doing this in algebra class quite a bit. Okay, back in algebra one and pre-algebra, you did this type of thing. Maybe you saw something like this, x minus five equals eight. And how did we solve that? We added five to cancel out. We added five and we got x equals 13. That is the addition property of equality. We added five to both sides of the equal sign. All right, sometimes you might see it like this. Um, 2x equals negative 4x plus 12. Okay, so what did we do? We added 4x, that's gonna cancel out, and then we went to the other side of the equal sign and we added 4x. And we got 6x equals 12. And then we still solve that, but that's a different property. And we'll, we'll get to that one in just a little bit, okay? So the addition property of equality says you can add the same thing to both sides of an equal sign. Now what you cannot do, this is what I've seen some people do on in the work every now and then, you get something like this, 2x plus seven minus three x minus four equals 12. And they go, okay, I gotta add this four, all right? So I'm gonna add the four here and this cancels. Hopefully you see the problem here. They added four here and here, but both of these are on the left side of the equal sign. So really they added eight to the left side of the equal sign and they added nothing to the right side of the equal sign. This is incorrect work. Do not do things that way. All right, in this case, you're gonna to wanna to combine your like terms first. It usually makes it easier, okay? But don't add to the same side of the equal sign. Make sure you're always adding to the opposite side of the equal sign, okay? All right, next one is subtraction property of equality. Basically says the same thing, except talks about subtraction. So you're allowed to subtract the same amount from both sides of an equal sign. Okay, so maybe you get something like this. 3x minus eight equals four. So how do we start solving that? We add eight, we add eight. You notice we did it to both sides of the equal sign, same amount. These cancel we get 3x equals 12. And then we're gonna, we're gonna continue solving that in another step. But that other step is not the subtraction property. Okay, the subtraction property just says you can subtract the same thing from both sides of the equal sign. Okay, Multiplication property of equality. We actually don't use this one quite as often as the others. Because usually if we get something like this, we're not multiplying to get rid of this three. We're not multiplying to get rid of this six. Okay, we're actually doing division. We use this one more than this one, but there are times where we wanna use the multiplication property of equality. Maybe it's something like this, 3 fourths x equals 12. Okay, do you guys remember how you solved this one back in algebra class? How did we get rid of a fraction here? What did we multiply it by? Okay, you guys remember, hopefully we multiplied by its reciprocal. Okay, remember, reciprocal means I take that fraction three over four and I kind of flip it upside down so I have a four over three, because what do these fours do to each other? They cancel out. What do the threes do? They cancel out. But if I multiply this side by four thirds, what do I have to do to this side? I have to multiply it by four thirds. Now this 12 is over one. And now we can reduce first and then multiply, or we can multiply and reduce. Either order is fine. So x equals 12 times four is 48, one times three is three. And then 48 over three is just x equals 16. So that would be my answer. That's an example of where we'd use the multiplication property of equality. In this case, we multiplied both sides by the four thirds, by the same amount, okay? Division property of equality. You can divide 
both sides of the equal sign by the same thing. That's how we would finish this problem up here. Okay? You can divide both sides of the equal sign by the same thing. So if I have this and I want to finish it, what do I divide both sides by? I divide by 6. These cancel. x equals 2. Okay, same thing here. When I get to this step of 3x equals 12, what do I divide both sides by? I divide by 3. And I get x equals 4. We can do it with a negative. Maybe I get negative 2x equals 10. So what do I do to both sides? I divide by negative 2. 2's cancel, the negatives also cancel. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. x equals negative 5. Okay, that's the division property of equality. Substitution property of equality. Now, this one, it's not really that you're going to do it to both sides of the equal sign anymore. Okay? Substitution property of equality is, says this. If A equals B, then we can substitute A for B any time. Okay? If two things are equal, we can substitute A for B. Technically, we could do B for A as well. When you've done this, all right, and you guys have done this, you may not have realized what you're doing, but remember when you did uh, problems like 2x plus 3y equals 7, and then maybe, you know, um, 5x minus 3y, which I think that's going to equal 7 again. No, I, I got to, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to make sure I make a point that works actually. Okay, this is already nicely set up. We're going to combine these, they're going to cancel, we're going to get 7x equals 14. We're going to apply our division property real quick and get x equals 2. Now, do you guys remember how we went and solved for y? We came back to one of these originals. Let's say we come back to that 2x plus 3y equals 7. And we know that x equals 2. So we're going to take the x out and we're going to substitute 2 for x. That's the substitution property of equality right there. Instead of x, I wrote 2 because x and 2 are equal. If things are equal, we can substitute one of them for the other one any time. So since x equaled 2, I stuck 2 right there for x. I substituted it. A lot of times we say plug it in. All right, that's what we're doing. And then I can keep going. This is 4. We subtract 4 from both sides using our subtraction property of equality. We divide both sides by 3 using our division property of equality. We're going to put all that together later on. Okay? All right, distributive property. Now, you'll notice one thing. It's not right here. All the other ones had it. What was it? They all had of equality, of equality, of equality, of equality, of equality. The distributive property is not of equality, and if you write of equality, I'm going to mark it wrong. Okay, kind of keep that separate. Okay, it's technically called the distributive property of multiplication over addition. All right, but we usually just call it the distributive property. All right, distributive property. You guys are very used to this. Two times x plus seven. When we have parentheses, what do we do? We distribute the two to both sections, so 2x plus 14. Or maybe we have x times x minus 5. So we distribute the x to both things. What's x times x? Remember, it's not 2x. x times x is x squared minus 5x. That's the distributive property of multiplication over addition. We say of multiplication because we're multiplying this and it's over the addition sign. In other words, it's, it's kind of past the addition sign. Here it's a minus sign. We, we could call it of multiplication over subtraction as well, but a lot of times we think of this as plus a negative anyway. So it's the same idea, distribute your property of multiplication over addition. You don't have to write the of multiplication over addition part down unless you want to, but if you write of equality, I will mark it wrong. Okay, a couple more properties and we're done with this first part of the video. Okay, these are some new properties. Those other ones, you've, you're probably familiar with them. You may not have known that they had a special name, but you've been using them. Okay, these ones you may not know nearly as much about. So the first one is the reflexive property of equality. Now, the name kind of gives it away. Reflexive, kind of like a reflection, right? A reflection, when do you see a reflection? Well, when you look in a mirror, that's an easy time, or 
maybe if you look in a real nice, clear, um, smooth, you know, uh, body of water, like a lake. A lake will sometimes reflect clouds off it or whatever. But usually just looking in a mirror. And when you look in a mirror, what do you see? You see, well, yourself. So that's really what the, the reflexive property of equality says. It says something always equals itself. It's not real complicated. It says 4 equals 4. Or A equals A. In geometry, AB equals AB. All right, remember, what does it mean when we have nothing over the top of two letters? You guys remember that? It means the length of the segment. So the length of segment AB equals the length of segment AB. Well, that makes sense. The length of this segment is not going to change in the middle of the problem. All right? We can do the same thing with angles. You guys remember what we did with angles? How did we get equals? We put that little M in there. So the measure of angle X equals the measure of angle, it always equals itself, so angle X again. Angle X's measure is not going to change in the middle of a problem. If it's 30 degrees now, it's 30 degrees later. If it's 75 now, it's 75 later. Okay. Now, this is really easy, but we use it a lot. Remember the one star, two star, three star? This is three stars. We use this a lot later on. So you better make sure you understand it. As far as those other properties that were on the other sheet, we're going to use them a little bit now, but not a ton later on. They're really important, though. They are. You've been using them a lot in algebra. Okay? But we're not going to do a ton with them in geometry. All right, let's look at this next one, the symmetric property of equality. Now, this one we don't use quite as much. It's probably all the way down to one star. All that the symmetric property says, think about that word symmetric, if you remember that from a, a prior class, symmetry, symmetry. Right, symmetry meant that something looked the same on one side as it did on the other. If I had line symmetry, I could kind of fold something across that line and it would look the same. That's the idea here. If A equals B, then B equals A. So what it's saying is we can basically flip it around. All right, symmetry means if I kind of switch it, it, it still works. Okay? So if A equals B, then B equals A. Or if x, y equals p, q, then we can flip it around and say p, q equals x, y. Or we can do it with angles. If the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle F, then what do you think you would write? Just flip it around. The measure of angle F equals the measure of angle A. Okay. But we really don't use that one very often. Okay, I'm still going to ask you a question on it at some point, probably on your homework on a quiz. But this is not one that's going to necessarily be on the, the midterm exam or the final exam. We just don't use it enough. Okay, Last one, transitive property. We just talked about this word transitive with our laws of logic. Remember we had one called the law of syllogism, also known as the law of transitivity. It's the same idea, law of transitivity. It meant you could skip something. This is three stars, really important. Same idea, we can skip something. So if A equals B and B equals C, then, okay, what do you think you would skip? Well, the only thing that's the same is the B, right? So we're going to skip the B and say A equals C. We can do it with segments. If MN equals PQ and PQ equals RS. Okay, skip the middle, skip the PQ. So what would be true then? What do you think it would be? Go ahead, answer out loud at home. Mom might look at you like you're crazy, but that's okay. MN equals RS. Here, skip the middle. So what we're doing is skipping the middle. We're coming all the way down to here. Okay. Do it with angles. If the measure of angle G equals the measure of angle H, and the measure of angle H equals the measure of angle, you guys thought I was going to say I, so I'll just call it L just to fool you. All right? Then what's true? As long as the middle's the same, skip the middle. 
how would we write it? Don't forget your M's. Measure of angle G equals measure of angle L. Okay, that's the transitive property. It has the idea of skipping something. Okay, so you got all these properties you need to know. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and substitution properties of equality. Distributive property, don't put of equality. Those are all old, learned them in algebra. Maybe you didn't know they had a name, but they did. You just didn't know it. All right, you need to know all those. And then these three new ones, reflexive property of equality, very, very, very important. We're going to use it a lot. Symmetric property of equality, we don't use it a lot, but it's pretty easy. And then transitive property of equality, which we do use quite a bit, and that's that whole idea of skipping the middle. All right, that's the first part of lesson 2.5. All right, make sure you watch both videos. Both videos, two videos, lesson 2.5. All right, get ready for the second one.